Welcome, direct from the Artful Tourist Trailer Park Studios and brought to you by www.nachatton.com. I'm Norma Ann Chatton, and we're here with the second in the Renew This Book series. Renew This Book, just as a summary, is about taking a book that's a little bit um, out of date, that's not as loved as it used to be, and converting that book into a visual journal or an artist journal, depending on how you look at yourself is what title I would use. Um, the book that I've decided and selected to use for the uh, video is one that we showed in video one as an option for this type of journal. It's called Encyclopedia of Dreams. This is a great book. It's, um, it's large, which I like a lot. I think it's about 14 inches high. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. It could be 12. I'm sorry I didn't measure it. But anyway, we're going to have a great time on Renew This Book. So, here we go. Uh, the supplies that you'll need are um, a craft knife. Uh, I call it an X-Acto knife, but that's not the brand that I use. I use one called a Fiskars. I love this knife because it can go in and out. Uh, you're also going to need a thin cutting mat, which looks mine looks like this. You can use one from your kitchen. You can use all kinds of cutting mats, but you need one that's going to slip right into the to the binding of the book. So you need a thin cutting mat. You're also going. This is the cut, color, paste section. Uh, it's the jump start plan. So you're going to need some coloring materials. Some of the ones I'm using today are reinkers. Um, I'm using a little bit of uh, spray-on. It's the Ranger Color Wash. I'm using some acrylic paint in, from Scrapbook Shades and from Delta Crema Coat. Some painting tools. I use this one by uh, Tim Holtz a whole lot. It's just a felt applicator with a handle. You can also make these yourself. I'll put those on another video sometime. Uh, but it's a great, great project. And of course, I've got all my regular supplies right here, plus some items that we're going to use to cut from, which are sitting on my little shelf over there. So, time to get started. Before I say so, one more time. Okay, here's your book. You want to get started first by cutting out some of the pages or signatures if you're a big bookmaker. And you want to cut two or three pages at a time and then flip through the book and cut two or three more pages at a time. The only thing you want to be careful about in cutting is that you don't want to see, it's going to be really tricky to see this right now, but if you can see the stitches in a page, I would avoid cutting right there just because it seems like um, that's going to weaken it a little more than you want it to be weakened. So you put your cutting forward right up into the edge of the binding, fold the page over underneath, and like I said, normally I'd do two, three pages, but this is my first sample, so I'm just going to show you. Take the cutting blade, start at the top, and just roll right down to the bottom. You want to cut as close as you can, but it doesn't matter if you don't cut close. Uh, gives everything more things. So, there you go. Your page is released. Take your page set it to the side, and turn a few more pages, and this time we'll do two. So I've turned to this page. I'm going to start with my knife right at the top of the page. It's really hard to cut around the camera note itself. Um, and cut. If you don't go all the way through, just put your cutting board back and make sure you get the release. There you go. And we'll set those pages aside. Now, I don't throw those pages away because I often use them to go back into the book. Once you've gone through and through the Miracle of Video, I've already gone through and cut out several pages in this book. Um, just to show you, that's about how many I did for this book. But you just skip about ten pages and then cut two or three out. Skip about ten pages and cut two or three out. So now your cutting is done. The prep work on the cutting except for the fun part. Now, on the fun part, we recommend that you go into a page and then just cut the page, something of interest in the page, like take a craft knife, start not at the corner, but somewhere else. You can see I'm making some curves. Take it all the way to the binding. And then I decide which one I like best, and I like the top of this best, so I'm going to just cut at the bottom, again, in a curve so you can see it. And then what you have left is a page like that. Just adds a little interest to your page. 
another thing that's a lot of fun and very easy to do is to cut windows on a page. So I'll go to here. Ooh, I like that picture, so I'm not going to cut a window there. I'll go here. And again, when you're cutting the pages out, sort of look at what's on that page to see if it's a page you want to remove. You may like a picture and want to remove it to paste it in later or not. Now, for your windows, you can cut by a picture that's in your journal already, or you can just cut. You can see what I'm doing here is just making a square shape, roughly square is what I would call it. And once I've done that, I release it, and there's a hole in the page. So now you can do something with your art and make that a frame. So you'll go through, do some of those. You can also um, punch. You can die cut depending upon the type of machine you have. But you'll go through and put some little places of interest all the way through your book. Now, your pages are cut. Your places of interest are set. The next step is going to require a few more um, tools and examples. You're going to need media scraps, which can be the scraps from your book with pictures that you like. Uh, could be tear-outs from magazines. Isn't that some beautiful glare on there? Uh, I love to use what I call homeless scrapbook papers, papers I might have had for years, maybe somebody gave me that I really don't see myself using in a lot of other ways, um, some print or textured papers. But these are a thin paper. Uh, they are not cardstock. Cardstock works, too. Just depends on what you like. Another thing that I love to do, since we're all about renewal and recycling, is I will tear some pages out of a notebook or something like that that I didn't finish using, but I can recycle those papers in my visual journal. So, first thing I do usually is glue and cover, because then I want to ink the background with the cover on them in most cases. Now, I'll take a look at my pages. These are the first two pages of the book. So I want to prepare space here for writing, and I usually like to do some kind of introduction. So I'm going to want to do quite a bit of writing, I would think, in this area. So I'm going to decide what I want to tape on there. Um, I've got the option of pictures. Ooh, there's a good one that I tore out. A mask from the Dream Journal. So uh, you can cut. You can slice. You can tear. Just do whatever you like to get your picture the way you want it, to get your cutout the way you want it. And I can, you know, just judge by eyes. Whoa. And I can see that this covers the writing on this page. Another note to self, disadvantage of a large book in video. You can use any type of adhesive you like. If you really want to stick down, I love a... Um, Xyron adhesive, because you can roll it through the Xyron. Sometimes I just, you know, want it to kind of ruffle up and, and be rough looking. So it just depends. What I'm using here is a very strong dry glue. It's a permanent adhesive by Tombow. So I've put adhesive on the back of this. And now I'm going to place it right here. And it looks like it's happy and ready to go. And then I'm going to color these backgrounds as well. Now, over on this page, to me, this is sort of a boring page. It doesn't have to be. A lot of people like to have just writing on a page. It depends on what makes you happy. Uh, I'm probably going to just use a um, piece of printed or notebook paper here uh, because I'll be doing some considerable writing. So. Here's a piece of notebook paper, and I know it looks pretty boring now, but you'll see as we go along that you jazz this up. And what we're doing right now is basically just prepping the book for your artist journal time. So I'm going to put that there. Next page over here, we've got a big picture. Probably not going to do a lot with that. This page, again... Looks a little boring to me. Depends on what you like and what you don't like. Uh, but I might take perhaps something I have uh, torn from a magazine. This is a waterfall. It says just add water. On the other side, there's some pretty clothes and jewelry. I really like um, fashion and jewelry. So both of these, you know, pretty much appeal to me. What I'm going to do is tear 
the earrings off and see how that fits. Which side of this do I want to tear? I think I want to tear this side. Do some gluing. I'd probably glue this a little firmer if I wasn't on video. I don't line it up. You can see my edges are not straight or even. That's okay. This piece I might want to just take and reverse and do this way. And it could make a nice little border at the edge of the page. Or you could take a piece of your print paper and put that in here. So just to show you a variety, I'm going to use scissors. print paper, measure it, cut again. I think you're getting the picture now. So once you've done your paste in, glue in, however you want to refer to that, and gotten those down. And you can go through like a, you know, a dozen pages and do some paste ins or you can, you know, just do a couple and start with the color as a background if you like. Next thing we're going to do is work with the color. As I said, there's lots of color application tools that you can use, lots of things that work really well, um, and you'll probably see me wearing all of them on my fingers soon, too. Uh, for this one, for the mask, I think I'm going to try some acrylic paint. Again, just pick whatever you want. Um, and I've got some acrylic dripping in there don't like that. Oh, you didn't get to see my dress. But there you go. So we'll take this. And I'm using a pouncing tool. Why? Because I don't need to completely cover the uh, background. And it's a tribal mask, so it has sort of a tribal effect. And that's where I'm going to stop on that one right now and move over to this page with the notebook paper. Again, I'm working really fast just to try and give you some ideas for coloring. And if you check my website, it'll have a whole list of ideas for things. And you'll probably start thinking of your own. You, I've seen people take duct tape and put that in. There's a really, really fast way to cover a mostly white page. Uh, I just took a rainbow ink pad and swiped it down the page. Remember when you're using rainbow to swipe only in one direction so you don't mix the colors on your pad. Once you've, you know, done your initial prep work, and like I said, I'd probably do more on that page, but I want to get to some other techniques. Again, we're renewing this book, so we're recycling. So for recycling purposes, I just take a regular, you know, bag, a plastic bag like you get at the store. I lay it on my pages in between them so that I don't get paint. Now, sometimes I like getting paint. This depends on where you are that day. Uh, the other technique that I wanted to be sure and have you see uh, is the ink spreader reinker technique because I just love what this does. Um, again, I use the ink applicator, put a clean piece of felt on it, and then I get a couple colors of ink. I usually start with the lighter color. This is a color box disc. You can use any re-inker you like. I'd play around with them. Some are opaque. Some are sheer. Some are a little of both, if you ask me. Um, this is a wisteria. What's this one? A yellow. I'm going to use the wisteria, which is a purple with a bisque. Now, you can see I've just put some random dots on there. And I like this photo over here, so I'm turning you again. I'm going to show you, if you just go straight with the re-inker and make some curves, that's cool looking. Now, if you want to do a little more, you can again pounce with this. If you pounce, it gets a little heavier, so if there's something you really want to cover up, pouncing works really good. Uh, you can also do different techniques. And once I've done that, I might go back to my paint on my pouncer, remember this one, and pounce a little more over the ink, Just blend everything, acrylic paint and ink is what I'm blending right now, and it's looking great. 
I usually, you know, again, I'm keeping these subtle because they're background colors. If I were, like, doing a, an artwork, I would now use a third color, maybe a darker color, something like that. Um, if you'd like, there's that spray. This might come in fun here. This is the Adirondack Color Wash Spray. And you can spray that. It doesn't stick all that well to slick paper, but it creates a fun effect and it will dry. So I've got that done. And again, you can smear. I've, these uh, ink applicators also work for paint. This is just some basic Delta Cream Coat paint, which is my favorite craft paint. You can find these in all the craft stores. Uh, about once a month, they'll usually go on sale. I put a lot on there, so I'm just dabbing some of it off. And then I'm going to see, see the acrylic paint to me has a, a little bit firmer texture. Uh, I mean, more opaque texture. So it's going to, if you dab that, it's really going to not show what's underneath. And if you spread it, it becomes very, very thin. And you can see what's underneath. I love doing the edges of a page. Now what I've done is on here, I've blended in that color wash. You can choose an area and leave it open or choose an area and leave it closed. I'm working a little bit on that leg here. Kind of let that show a little more. There's another example of coloring techniques. Obviously, you can tell by the enthusiasm around here that this is just too much fun. There's loads and loads of different ways to color your pages. Again, I'm going to go through a lot of those on the website. But what we've done today is the Cut, Color, and Paste Jumpstart Plan. I want you to do about 12 of, of these pages in the beginning of the book and then skip over to the middle and do a few more. Keep your... Um, paper in between if you want while, while it's drying. However, for, I'll show you on this one. You can see this paper right here and it's going into the plastic. It's really fun to take this plastic off. You can see the paint on it now and put it down on another page while it's all still wet and crinkly. And that's a cool look too. Then I'll take it back and by now it's blended onto both pages little more there, put it back in, and I'm going to be letting it dry. That one, this one I'm just going to leave like it is and do some more over it. This is the um, notebook paper page that we did, this is the tribal page. I like to take that again, maybe do some mudding. Uh, there are not a lot of rules, not a lot of rhymes, not a lot of reasons, except that it's fun. So, now we've done the cut, color, and place jumpstart plan. We've got a list of your supplies on the website. We've got a list of the process. Use the cutting blade to remove the selected pages. Remove the pages. Cut about, you know, a few windows. Cut all the way through the book. Then start working on color backgrounds. I'm going to also show you an example of color backgrounds once they've been journaled on, and that'll be our next video. Thanks for watching. Again, for more details, check out www.nachatton.com.